We all know the importance of how we represent ourselves. The things we say and the things we do influence the people around us. It's all about the message we are sending, including the things that we wear. Christians can be more aware of the messages we bring to others in their clothing with Covenant Press. Covenant Press is a faith-based Christian apparel and accessory store that is fearfully and wonderfully made. If you want to wear the message of Christ and Christianity, then go to their website at covenant-press.com. That's www.covenant-press.com. For the next 24 hours, you will get 25% off the purchase of $50 or more using the discount code GROWTH at checkout. Sign up and become a member to receive points for future purchases. Again, that's covenant-press.com, www.covenant-press.com to get 25% off your purchase of $50 or more using discount code GROWTH at checkout. Tell your friends and family about covenant-press.com so we can all share the message. Welcome to Laquita's Toolbox, where we deliver relevant content in the form of tools that empower entrepreneurs to elevate personally and professionally. Good is only good until greater is envisioned. You know there's another level in you. Here we discuss the tools to get you there. Lean in as Laquita and her guests present you with strategies and insight for unlocking your full potential to realize your boldest dream. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another amazing episode of Laquita Tools Box. I am your host, Laquita Monley, and I am very excited today for a number of reasons. First of all, this is my first lab Laquita's Toolbox in 2022. Yay, right? And this is also another first for us because all of the podcasts and live broadcasts that we've done, I've had one or two conversations where we've talked about marriage, but never in the way that we're going to talk about marriage today. Day. So I'm super excited to have with us uh, on today, Miss Alexandra Stockwell. She is an intimacy and marriage coach, and she's going to drop some gems on us today. So you guys know it's something to write with and something to write on because we will be blessed with some tools on today. But before we jump in and get started, I want to take a moment just to thank our sponsors at Covenant Press. They are the sponsors of today's episode of Laquita's Toolbox Live. Covenant Press is a faith-based Christian apparel and accessory shop where you as a believer can purchase items in order for you to wear the message. So go out to www.covenant-press.com and shop to your drop, ladies and gentlemen. And if you make a purchase of $50 or more and you put in the promo code GROWTH, you will receive 25% off of your purchase. So go out to www.covenant-press.com. Let's shop till we drop. Don't forget to put in that promo code GROWTH to get 25% off of your shopping when you've purchased $50 or more of items. Again, thank you guys so much uh, for partnering with us there at Covenant Press, but we're going to dive right in to the conversation today. Ms. Stockwell is going to give us some amazing gems and tools because Laquita's Toolbox, you know, we like to leave you with tools to help you grow as an entrepreneur, as well as tools for your personal growth and development. And today's topic will definitely help you with both. Many of us are in loving relationships, whether we're married or we've been in stable long-term relationships, and we're trying to build a business together. And we've discovered some things that we probably should have talked about before we started that business. And Ms. Stockwell is here to bless us on today. So, Ms. Stockwell, how are you? I'm very well. I'm really excited to be here. And I already have two things that I want to say. Okay. As to what you've said already. The first one is that, yes, 
we're going to talk about marriage or long-term committed relationships, but I want to be super clear. If you're a fan of Laquita's toolbox and you've really used the tools to improve your entrepreneur endeavor and you're single, keep listening because every single tool, every single thing that we're going to talk about, okay, maybe not every single thing, depending on how juicy we go and if we go in that direction at all. But other than that, everything that I'm going to say and we're going to discuss, it applies in any really important relationship. I just want to say right off the bat, some of my favorite testimonials are from people who hear me talking about how to communicate, how to navigate challenges in a marriage, but they use those same communication tools with an advisor, with staff at work, with colleagues, with neighbors where there's a complicated relationship. So even though I'm not going to translate every time, definitely listen with that in mind. And maybe things are really going well in your marriage, but you have another relationship. Your mother isn't supportive as you grow your business. Use these tools with her. First thing I want to say, did you want to say something about that? No, that was powerful. That was powerful because yeah, we're, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. Not just, you know, as your parents, your mom, your dad, but a lot of times when you're starting out your entrepreneurial journey, the people who you thought were going to be the most supportive in terms of your close-knit family and friends actually... They're the doubters. Yeah, they're the doubters. They're the doubters. So now I'm excited for real. Like, I've been excited about this for a couple of weeks, but I am really excited today. Okay, well, that's so good. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to say is I wanted to honor you because, of course, you've got the juice flowing and are making it happen. And... I really love that right at the beginning of this conversation, you opened celebrating that this is the first live broadcast, the first podcast of 2022. And you say that and it feels exciting. And I'm guessing you're all about celebration. And I am. That is so important, especially when it comes to our spouse or our romantic partner. And here is why. As human beings, we need, in order to just survive and thrive and live our lives, we need to be on the lookout for danger. I mean, it used to be for, you know, the tigers and the lions that might endanger us. Now it can just as well be the ongoing judgmental commentary in our head, which is what is not keeping us safe. But the point is that if you've got an issue with your partner or there's some way in which he or she is bugging you or you just have some uh, some challenge there, mostly what people do, even if that's like 15, 20 percent of the relationship, they focus on that 90 percent of the time. It's like whenever you think of your husband, you get that feeling in your body of disappointment and frustration because you can't quite figure out how to get him on board as you want to use your creative energy and bring in more income and grow in the way that any entrepreneur needs to grow, whatever your motivation is. And so we can easily fill the real estate of our mind with something that really only deserves a small amount of our attention. It does deserve attention, but only a smaller amount. And in that case, one of the very best things to do, here's the first tool, is celebrate. Celebrate what is going well. Celebrate that you all had a lovely dinner together. Celebrate what a beautiful home you've made with your partner. There are things that still bring you pleasure in that relationship and don't forget about them. Celebration will remind you and just doing that often makes whatever the challenge is a lot simpler to navigate because it's not overtaking you and you don't feel as helpless when you remember the larger context. That's really good because we forget to celebrate sometimes. When you're busy building business or I think maybe it's even applicable when you have two high-performing individuals in the relationship and that was the one thing that, that was like one of the big reasons why you were attracted to each other in the beginning because you were high performing, you're go-getters, um, you're achieving great things. And in the midst of achieving those goals, we forget to celebrate one another and things can kind of get a little sticky if we spend a long time not celebrating one another, especially when differences occur because differences will occur, right? Totally. And by nature, 
being ambitious is very much a forward-looking attitude. If you're an entrepreneur, you've got at least some amount of ambition. And ambition doesn't really invite celebration, which is much more reflection and taking mm -hmm. a moment to pause and enjoy. And so whether it's growing your business or enjoying your marriage or any other thing in life, it's really important. In fact, to make this really into a tool, put it in your calendar once a week. Maybe every Sunday afternoon is celebration time. And you can make that as big or as little as you want. You can break open a bottle of wine and celebrate what's going on in that week. You can take a walk. You can just send one another a text. But if you're listening, this can sound like such a simple, minor, no big deal. Let's get to the really important stuff. <laughs> and I just want to emphasize that taking the time to celebrate who you're with in your life and to use your words so that they hear it too. It's not just that you do it in your office, at your desk, sitting at your computer, and you think, oh, he's so great. I mean, do that. I think go ahead and let him know that that's what you're feeling. And that's what you're feeling. Because <laughs> that is a really important tool for more joy, more pleasure, more connection, and more support as you grow your business. Because one of the biggest things is that whether our partners are also entrepreneurs or not, is that the more successful you are, the more they can feel left behind and like they're a little less necessary. If you're struggling in your business and it's really hard and so you turn to your partner for moral support and to comfort you, sometimes that can actually be much easier and actually nourishing for a marriage than if you're making things happen, you're working long hours. I mean, most partners are happy to see the income come in. But if you're working hard and things are growing and the income isn't coming in, or maybe it already is, that actually puts more stress on a marriage than when you're turning to one another for support. That um, reinforces the bond. Yeah. So you've said a, a couple key things, at least they were key to me that stuck out there. When you are choosing to go into an entrepreneurial venture, whether or not your partner goes with you or not, it's really necessary. So what I hear you saying there, my interpretation is, it's really necessary to know your partner and know your partner well. Because if your partner is the provider protector, and that's like what makes them thrive, the provider protector portion of it, when it appears that you no longer need them for that provider protector because of the level of success that you're achieving, that could cause an issue. But when you're definitely needing them, everything is okay. So it's key to... It's not okay in your business, but it's, it's okay, not okay in your marriage. business. But it, yeah, right. It's not okay in your business, but it's okay in your relationship. And so let's, if, if we can for a minute, what is something like if you if we have individuals say, okay, yes, I'm experiencing that. That makes sense. I cannot understand why he or she was acting crazy. But now that I think about it, what you guys said, that makes sense. What is something that you can do to assure your partner who thrives off of that, that provider protector component to, I still need you very much in that way and in many other ways. What are some of the things that we can make a conscious effort of doing so that our partner can feel safe, if I can say it like that? Absolutely. Okay, there are two things and they're both very important. The first one is that if you're starting a business, you have a growth mindset. You believe that you can change, that you can learn new things. You might doubt it sometimes. That's like part of the beginning of starting a business. But overall, you think that you can learn new things and be in the world in a new way. And so you will grow, evolve, and change. Cause for celebration, of course. But if you're growing and changing and your sense of who you are and your contribution in the world and how you interact with other people, at least within your business context, has changed, of course, that's going to change the dynamic in your relationship because you're left with two choices. And I'm saying this in a simple way that's logical, but this is very real. You're left with become like staying stagnant in your marriage, like going back to who you were before you started your business in your marriage. But that is not a long term solution that has you feel like you're compartmentalizing your life in ways that do not enhance it. It might be a short-term solution, 
but that is not good for your business or your relationship because it's not good for you. So that's one way that doesn't work that people handle that. So the important thing, no matter how long you've had your business, is to really understand that as you grow and change, the marriage is going to grow and change. For a lot of people, we know that relationships grow and change when there are challenges, when there are crises, when something is happening with one of your children and you've really got to figure out how you're going to navigate it and it's triggering and maybe you have the same idea or you don't. You have to figure out how to come together. Or, you know, I live in Northern California, so it's not a theoretical example that the house would burn down. You know, there are things like this which evolve a relationship. But many people forget that relationships absolutely can evolve in a voluntary way because good things are happening, but it's still a change. Even when good things are happening, you need to make room for the adjustment. And so if this is your situation, I suggest you plan a time with your spouse and say, how's it going for you since I've been in the business? Mm -hmm. And then you close your mouth and you open your heart and you listen generously. And you may love what your partner says, and you may be offended by it. How could he be suffering just because I'm growing and finding my voice and more contribution? It could be a mixture. Like there can be anything, but if you really ask the question and you genuinely are open for an honest answer, you may hear things that you don't enjoy. Mm -hmm. And it is your job. I often advise my clients to have a piece of paper and a pen nearby so that if there's something triggering, you can write it down. You're not going to forget it, but that way your mind doesn't need to focus on it and you can't keep listening to the new things your partner is saying. So you do, you do want to write it down and then keep listening. And if you've heard something that you do not enjoy hearing, and if you've heard something that was great, the proper answer or response is, thank you so much for telling me. Because you want your relationship to be one where you can speak honestly with one another. And mm -hmm. even if it's hard to hear the truth, once you know the truth, then the two of you can collaborate on resolving whatever the challenge is. Because one of the most common situations when one partner becomes an entrepreneur and the other one is an employee, meaning when five o'clock comes, they're done with work, they go home, they don't think about it. Yes, it's a very important part of their life. Yes, they may be earning a lot more money than you initially, but mm -hmm. when work is over, they're done. they're done. And so they don't understand why at 8.30 at night, when you're going to the bathroom, you have a new idea and you need to write it on your phone and you don't go back to the dinner table because you just, oh my gosh, and I forgot to let so-and-so know. I said I would tell them by the end of the day when they wake up in Shanghai, they need that message. Like all of that can feel like you're forgetting mm -hmm. the other partner can feel neglected. And so neglected. just hearing what that person's experience is has them feel less neglected. You don't need to do anything else except hear it and say, thank you so much for sharing that with me. Cause your partner needs to be able to bring his or her experience into the marriage mm -hmm. and have you both know what it is. That's really good. That's really good. So the, the two big takeaways that I that I, I pulled out of what you said there is one, um, don't back down from your pursuit. You know, some as you were saying in the beginning, some people make that radical shift. To, okay, let me just stop doing what I'm doing and go back to things the way that they were. But then that makes you unfulfilled and you unsatisfied, and that can grow into bitterness and other things that still won't be healthy for the relationship for the marriage. However the best course of action would be then to make sure you set aside that time to hear your partner out, to hear your, your husband or your wife out and listening with the intent to receive what they're saying, understand what they're saying. You might not agree with it. You might not like it, but validating their thoughts and their feelings because it's their thoughts and their feelings and then communicating that with them. Totally. Yeah. And if things are sticky between the two of you, like just not an easy flow and you ask and everything that your partner says is nice to hear and good, then you haven't made it safe enough for them to tell the truth. Oh, that's real good. 
Because if things are sticky, mm-hmm. there's something for you to hear, which isn't going to be wonderful. Wonderful. So what can we do in order to begin to cultivate an environment where our significant others feel safe saying what's truly on their heart and their minds? That is the golden question. And I'm going to come back to it. Okay. Okay. But before I do, I want to share my fundamental relationship philosophy. It is the topic of my book, because okay. that is the context for my answer to that question. Yes. And while you're sharing that, I'm going to grab the link and drop that link to your book. Oh, yeah. okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So throughout the Western world, probably the whole world, far and away, the most common relationship advice that is given is that you need to compromise. If you want a great marriage, you have to be good at compromising. And the exact opposite is true. The name of my book and one of my fundamental methodologies is uncompromising intimacy because in compromise you hold back on your experiences your aspirations your feelings sharing what's real for you out of consideration for how you think that's going to make your partner feel that's what compromise is and that works if what you want is a bland neutral companionship but if you want passion and collaboration and a really juicy, dynamic, yummy relationship, then the way to get that is to be uncompromising. And what I mean by that is not that you always get your own way and that you get to dominate. That's not what I mean at all. It's just in contrast to compromise where you hold back on what's living in you out of consideration so it doesn't upset your partner, that in uncompromising intimacy, you learn how to bring all of who you are to the relationship and have room for all of your partner. Because when you're both there, yeah, there are going to be some things that are hard to hear, but oh my gosh, when there is this safety, I mean, it can be edgy, but it's fundamentally safe to share the truth with one another and bring all of yourself into the marriage or the relationship. Well, that makes for some very juicy life. So that is the context for me. And actually, let me just say that in my book, I tell stories, I share this philosophy. And at the end of every chapter, there is a very clear tool and assignment so that you can really take these concepts and implement them in your life. And I I recently heard from a man who read my book. His wife did not. He just showed her the exercise from one chapter and they did it together. And he said it's completely transformed their marriage. Things are much more vulnerable and connected between them just from this one exercise. So if you like implementing tools, I highly recommend that you just read my book. It's short and it will give you a lot. But back to your question, how do you make it safe for your partner to share? That's really not about your partner. That's about you. And there are many different elements to it. Do you want to say something before I continue? I want to say a lot of stuff, but I'm going to let you go because we have to own our stuff, right? We have to own our our stuff. And we have to own our identity. Mm -hmm. We have to be, I mean, one of the fundamental principles of emotional intelligence is the ability to receive feedback. And that's basically what we're talking about. Yes. Yes. When our partner says these things, they're giving us feedback. And the key in receiving feedback is not to take it personally, to listen, receive, and consider what's true for you. Mm -hmm. So it may be that your partner says, you're never available. You're more in love with your business than you are with me. Okay. You want to listen. You want to have room, but not in that moment, express the range of your emotions. Mm -hmm. You might respond by just feeling so deflated and like, I'm never going to get this right. You might respond with fury. What are you talking about? I am doing this for us. How could you be so unappreciative? I mean, there is a whole range of responses that would arise, but your job is to receive the feedback, notice what arises. If you do have an intense reaction, Mm -hmm. that's like a big neon light saying, hey, you got to look at this, work this through. Yes, yes. And 
if you listen and it you're like oh actually that's what my boss used to say you know if, if you've heard this before or yeah then you also want to take it seriously but it could be that mostly you've been unavailable mm -hmm. to orient to your partner's current growth and focus and maybe he or she is in a slump mm -hmm. and so of course they're experiencing what's going on with you in the context of their slump and so you can really be compassionate that they're feeling down and so your actions are just more evidence for their feeling down because that's how life works like the point is you don't suddenly think that your partner's analysis of the situation is the end all and be all and so you got to get in line with it but you also don't just dismiss it and think he's got the wrong priorities it's a, it's a dialogue it's a give and take and the most important thing is to open your heart and be willing to hear it even if it stings because that's where the connection can happen because it is so healing when someone can actually express how they feel and just let it sit between you without making the feelings wrong or making anybody wrong in the process. That's your good. You know, one of the um one of the power or tools that we like to talk about as my husband and I are preparing marriage facilitators is, is the component of effective communication yeah. or not just uh, effectively communicating, but being able to make that connection when you are communicating. And it goes back to uh, personal responsibility as it relates to emotional intelligence. Do I know myself? Do I understand how I receive information? Do I understand, you know, what my reactions are, whether they are facial expressions, verbal expressions. Do I, if I hear or receive something that didn't make Yeah, okay, that, tell me all about that, it. Right? That, that part, you know, the folding yeah. of the arms, the tapping of the foot, am I withholding intimacy because I'm annoyed with you by what you said? Like, it comes to a lot of personal responsibility. Communication is so much greater. Communication and connection is so much greater than listening. That's just one component. After I've heard what you said, then how did I process it? How am I responding? How am I, are my reactions making the person that I'm communicating with? How does it make them feel? Do they feel like they can safely communicate certain things to me? Or are they putting it through so many filters that by the time it gets to me, it's so watered down the original intent. I, I don't get, I never get what they really think and feel because they don't want to receive from me what all of my previous actions has said that I'm going to do. So I, I really, really love what, what you said there as it relates to emotional intelligence, because we can be a really big reason as to why our partner won't speak truth to us. For sure. And actually, I'm going to give another tool for this. Yes. Which, as I speak about it, it may not sound so impressive, but it is very profound. Most people, when we listen, we are listening without being aware that this is a, the case, we're listening with our attention on our mind, on our head. We're listening to the words. We're listening with our head. Mm -hmm. And especially in this kind of conversation that we're talking about where you're asking your partner, how is it for you? And you know what? If their partner's an entrepreneur, if you're in business together, have this conversation just the same as I've recommended if your partner is an employee. Yes. But anyway, so you're having this conversation and instead of listening with your attention on your mind, which is the kind of listening where you listen in order to know what to say next mm -hmm. or what it's going to mean for you. Instead, drop into your heart and really keep your attention on your heart as you listen. And one of the main things that this accomplishes is that it provides the internal context for you to focus on the connection more than the content. I'm not saying regard the content that's important we just talked about it yes. yes but this is not some like review at work the more fundamental thing is to focus on the connection between the two of you and to be able to speak with one another that's more important than mm -hmm. any specific comment that is made absolutely let not listing with the intent to defend to explain mm -hmm. um to know what my next point is going to be, but listening with the intent of let me receive what my significant other has to say. 
I'm simply here to grasp an understanding. I might not agree with you, but I need to be in a position where I at least understand what you're saying to me and why you feel the way that you feel. And very often when you allow, when you expand enough to receive your partner's experience, you can make some very, knowing how it is for him or her, you can make some very small adjustments that change everything. I want to be concrete about that. So my husband and I are both physicians, but I mean, I'm a relationship and intimacy coach now, and I work from my home office and I have for years, and my husband goes to the hospital to work. And one of the things about being a doctor is that you don't really, this isn't true of all kinds of doctors, but the kind that he is, you don't really know when the day is going to end, how long it takes to do the charting, if there are any referrals to make. Sometimes one patient takes longer than another. And the point of all of this is that he did not leave work at a set time. And early in our marriage, it would be so challenging for me because I would want to have dinner ready when he got home. I wanted to coordinate with the children. Like there just were all kinds of things at the end of the day. And I wanted to know when he'd be home. Mm -hmm. And so he'd come home and I'd be frustrated. The other thing is that he never had this in his childhood. He was a latchkey kid, watched seven hours of television a day after school was over. And so it was really meaningful for him to have me greet him at the door or mm -hmm. acknowledge he'd come home. And I actually was happy to give that to him. I know it would be healing because he didn't experience that in his childhood. And I didn't want him to have the feeling of like coming home and not knowing if anyone would notice, which was something he was familiar with from his childhood. But I became so resentful that I would need to stop in the middle of something or I would need to disappoint him. And I didn't want to do either one, but it meant that for like 45 minutes, I was kind of in limbo. I didn't want to start something because I'd have to interrupt it or disappoint him. But then all this time would pass and I think, oh, I could have gotten something done. So eventually, not with the graciousness that I'm talking about now because I didn't know how then. I just erupted about how complicated it was. And my motivation was to be there for him, but it had to be in a way that was going to work for me. Yes. Because I had basically stopped interrupting what I was doing because I just got fed up with the situation. So my beloved husband heard this. And ever since then, it's been years and years and years. It's just one day where there was an exception. He texts me when he walks from the hospital to his car to say, I'm heading home now. That is such a nothing for him. It is like, it's just no big deal for him to write heading home. And that's it. Yeah. He's getting his keys out. He gets his phone out and lets me know he's coming home. But it changed my world. Not only because I could attend to all the things that I've described and I knew when he would be home, but I felt considered. I felt like my experience was honored in a way that went so deep. I felt so cherished. And for him, it's just Two not seconds. a big deal to yeah, send me a, a little... Deal. Yeah. yeah, he just says heading home. That's it. But, you know, and that's the power of being able to hear what your significant other is saying. Well, we can filter through all of, if I can say it like this, well, we can filter through all of the emotions and get right down to it. Oftentimes, we want the exact same thing. We may be saying it in different ways, expressing it in different ways. For like, sure. What, what we want is more of each other. Now, how we say it. <laughs> and it often needs yeah. a translation. Yes, yes for sure. And, you know, you can imagine my poor husband because he's a much quieter, calmer person. And I just erupted with my frustration and he could have said, you know what, it's okay, you know, I'll just come home, don't worry about it. That is probably the first response he had because he's been an anti-conflict man. But that's not what I wanted. Exactly. That is not at all what I wanted. And this solution, which is so painless for him, I think we often think, you know, if, if your need is unmet, it's going to be this whole dramatic thing and impossible. This was such a small thing for such him. a small thing. But we couldn't have come to that. And he wouldn't have known to do that if I hadn't expressed myself. So this is not the most elegant example of uncompromising intimacy, but it absolutely is uncompromising intimacy and created such a fantastic outcome. Absolutely. It's, a, it's generally the ball things like that. 
right? It's, it's generally the small things that may seem insignificant, but they actually hold a lot of value and a lot of weight. And it's learning how to effectively communicate that in a way that your significant other can receive it. And then on that receiving end, as the person that's that's hearing it, you know, are you willing to receive a truth that you don't like, you might not agree with, but it's so very much what your partner feels. And now that you've received that, are you willing to make little shifts? So exactly, that, make that little shift because at the end of the day, it's I want more of you. You know, I, I, yeah. When, and of course, we're talking about all this from a healthy relationship perspective. You're in a healthy, thriving relationship that has a few hiccups every now and then because you know life happens and we're living, breathing human beings, and nothing is perfect. And and though in that context of that healthy relationship, sending a quick text is a game changer. I as for me, that's a blessing. You know. Being the wife that's at home waiting, if you let me know when you're coming, about the time that you're coming, things will be so much different when you get here. That is correct. That is correct. They will be so much different when you get here. <laughs> I'll hear them that time. Yeah. Sit down and have that conversation with you. And for you to look at me while I look at you, while we're looking at each other, not necessarily just doing anything, we're just being in each other's space, I can actually give you that and not be angry about it because I could have been doing so many other things because I didn't know you were coming. You know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes. 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 This, oh man, this has been some, some great tools about um, being able to hear and receive. You know, what are we saying? How are we saying? How are you receiving what you're saying? And this works, in, like you said, in any type of relationship, whether you're married, whether you're single, whether you're this is employee to employer relationship. We have a lot of leaders that watch the the live broadcast and listen to the podcast as leaders, you know, are you creating that safe space so that your employees, your team members can tell you when the systems that you implement, it might not quite be working the way you envisioned in your head. Like, Kat, is it a safe space for them to speak to you? So these are, these are some great tools. These are some great, great tools. So I, we do, we do have, a question. Maybe it's the comment. No, it's more like a comment. Let's so hear it. The, yeah, one of the viewers is uh, letting us know that even though she hadn't asked a question, we have been answering all of her questions. So I'm so happy. <laughs> okay, questions. that's an awesome that's comment. I take the feedback. Yes, <laughs> she uh, she says she's not married, but in um in her current situation, there is constant tension. Um, there is a lot of issues uh, there that we have already addressed and touched on just in our conversation today. She said that, but he doesn't, he doesn't know many entrepreneurs and has admitted that entrepreneurship is a new territory for him. So he doesn't understand the time and the energy that it takes to build a business. He did also say that she is not easy to talk to. So she guess she has to work on that. <laughs> That's okay, awesome. well, I just yeah. want to honor that you were willing to take that lesson, that learning. Yes. That's beautiful. And yes. what an amazing conversation. And that would be really powerful for your relationship. If you have a conversation and realize, I mean, you say, honey, I realized you've been telling me about your experience and I haven't been so open to hearing it. And I want to change that. Yeah. That already is yeah. going to lead the way to a new kind of conversation that's different from the ones you've been having. Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. See, I told you I was excited about today's conversation. You know, <laughs> for, for it to be the opening um, segment for 2022 is amazing because at the top of the year, people all over the planet make declarations, goals, life shifts and everything. But in order to reach them, those of us that are, no matter what type of relationship you're in, you're the goal is always to cultivate a better one. Absolutely. How to, improve, how to improve upon what you have and hopefully, prayerfully, the tools that you've given us today, uh, all the Quitus Toolbox will help the listeners be able to um, cultivate those better relationships and grow, whether or not they're entrepreneurs, their personal growth and development, and their intimate relationships, um, friendships, work relationships. You've given us some powerful tools that definitely uh, can help us. And so... Well, give us one more time before we wrap up the name of your book. If you are um, on the podcast, the name of the Amazon link will be in the show notes. If you've been watching us live in the comment section, the links to her website have already been dropped, as well as the link to purchase the book. So uh, one more time, if you can give us the name of the book and so that they can go out and download it on the Kindle. 
Okay, fantastic. <laughs> the name of my book is Uncompromising Intimacy. You can remember it's the opposite of compromise, Uncompromising Intimacy. And yeah, it's available on Kindle as a paperback and also Audible. Awesome. So thank you so much, Ms. Stockwell, for joining us today. This has been a great, great, great conversation. And I believe that um, we have a live on IG. It hasn't been scheduled yet. Scheduled. So hopefully, listen, guys, keep following my page, whether you're following me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube, or LinkedIn. All of the notifications for my upcoming lives, podcasts, et cetera, all go out across um, my social media channels. So uh, stay tuned, not only for the next Laquitas episode, episode of Laquitas Toolbox Live, but to see if and when um, Dr. Stockwell will be rejoining us again. But until next time, this has been Laquitas Toolbox Live. I am your host, Laquita Monley. Dr. Alexandra Stockwell, again, thank you so much, ma'am, for blessing us today with some amazing tools on intimacy and how to improve communication and connection within our relationships. We appreciate you so much. It's really a pleasure. Awesome. Awesome. Toolbox audience, thank you guys so much for your feedback and your engagement. We appreciate you. Until next time, I'm Laquita Monley. This has been Laquita's Toolbox Live, and you guys have a blessed day. Take care.